Hello everybody, it's me, Chester, back at you again with another CMV Extra video. Hello, welcome. So today, we're going to be talking about something a little bit special. What is the best season of Spongebob? What What is the the, the season you should give someone when they ask, what is this, this Spongebob thing? What do you give this person? Well, let's work that out today by ranking them from worst to best. Now, does is this still a thing on YouTube? I, I knew it was a trend, there were a lot of people doing it, and I was like, I'm not doing that, I was dumb. What would I rank anyway? Well, here, look at me here, after it's been popular. So we're gonna be ranking the best to worst SpongeBob season, including the movies, uh, from S tier to uh, why are you even a thing? Yes, that's, that's, what, that's what we're gonna be doing. So. Um, we'll be revealing a lot about my personal taste when it comes to Spongebob, which will be an adventure. So, uh, yes, this is all to tie in with a series I'll be starting very soon where I will be reviewing uh, every season of Spongebob, one by one. It's going to be around 10 to 15 minutes each video, completely scripted, all that type of stuff. So we're going to be doing this now, where we're going to rank it with my current opinion, all that type of stuff. Then after the series, after reading a bunch of your guys' comments and all that type of stuff, we will rank again and change things up from our discovery after that. So let's jump into it with the first season. Are you ready, kids? Aye, aye, Captain! So the first season gave us a lot of very, very special and really good episodes, like Rock Bottom, Pizza Delivery, amazing episodes, amazing episodes. But as I will get into with the first video, which I have scripted, the rest of them I haven't done yet, and I think they've actually... Yeah, so I, I haven't uh, done any of the other ones, but I've started scripting for the first episode. Um, I feel like the first season of Spongebob has this issue with it where it's got some amazing episodes, but I don't ever really want to watch it again. Like there's, there's a few, few episodes, like I will always want to watch Rock Bottom. That's just the case. But the entire series as a whole, I never am thinking, damn, I wish I could just really watch that first season of Spongebob. I really feel like that. I firstly have no nostalgia for the first season. I, when I was little, I watched episodes from the second and third season. That was where kind of the show was up to. So, yeah. So the first season to me has the issue of the the Uncle Ben kind of scenario, where it's the the origin story or you know those original episodes that we've all seen, we all know, and I don't really want to go back to to watching again. So I, but you have to admit though. It created the show. It made all the status quo, the standards. It showed us the Krusty Krab. It showed us Mermaid Man and Barnacle Boy. It gave us the cast of characters. It set like the rules for the world, which often get ignored. It set the tone, the atmosphere, all that type of stuff. It was hugely influential, which is why I will put it in B tier. <laughs> it's a great season. It's fantastic. I just don't really care about watching it anymore. I've seen it, and like I know it's unfair in some ways to judge it like that, but it's the only way I can judge it because I've grown up as a SpongeBob fan. I've watched it, I know it, I've loved it. I don't really feel like going back to it. And I know I'm gonna get a huge amount of comments about this. We'll move it if there's a low outcry. We'll, we'll, we'll move it, all right, in, in the next ranking video. We'll, we'll move it if there's enough outcry, enough explanation as to why we should move it. So yeah, while, while I'm on that track, let me know in the comments down below your thoughts on all these different rankings and how you would rank it, that type of stuff, and which is your favorite season, excluding the first three, all right? It has to be after the first three, because I know everyone is just gonna be, oh, season two was the best season, obviously, because it had Steven Hillenburg. I wanna know about the rest of the show. Are you ready, kids? So, we'll move on to season two. All right, season two. Season two is a very good season. It gave us a lot of good episodes. Let me just pull up the wiki so I can actually know 100% which episodes I'm talking about here. Uh, okay, so the second season. The second season, uh, Your Shoes Untied. Eh. Eh. Um, what's a good episode here? So, of course, this season gave us the, the episode that I actually have the most nostalgia for because it was the first episode of SpongeBob I ever watched because... It came in one of those like uh, kids meals, fast food places. Uh, might, I think it was, it might have been McDonald's or something like that, where it came with a disc of a Nickelodeon show. That's how we discovered the Wild Thornberries. That's how we discovered Jimmy Neutron. And that's how we discovered SpongeBob. And on those was like one or two episodes. I think it was just one. And that was SpongeBob SquarePants Bubble Buddy. So, I mean, 
It's pretty good. It was a pretty good episode. Squidville was Squidville was really good. Squidville was really good. That was a great episode. The smoking peanut. That was a good episode to kind of like like that episode has so, so many good jokes in it. Like with um, Patrick investigating everything and <laughs> him with the pops the popsicle stick. It's I'm getting so close I can almost taste it. And you think he's licking the side of SpongeBob's head. <laughs> it was so good. And of course, it gave us like the masterpiece of the entire show, Band Geek. Band Geeks! And also the, the um, secret box, which was amazing, and Frank and Doodle. I'm honestly, like from these lists... See, because here's the thing, with, with the first season of Spongebob, there are those episodes that I do not want to watch at all. And this has nothing to do with nostalgia, they're just episodes I cannot stand, like I was a teenage Gary. I cannot stand that episode. Don't know why. Never been able to stand it. Like it is, it it hurts me. It hurts me to watch. But there are also some great episodes. But season two doesn't have any episodes that I don't like. There are episodes that I'm like, oh, I'll skip that. I've watched it enough times, type of stuff. But there is no episode where I would walk away or lose interest. Which is why I have to think season two has to kind of be. It has to go above. It has to be an A tier. It has to be. Like, come on. Come on. It has to be. In fact, I'm, you know, when we talk about Season 3, we might actually push it up to S. Because I think I think it's really good. I think it's a, I think it's a fantastic season. Uh, like, Sandy and the Worm, that was a great episode. Um, what was it? I'm Your Biggest Fanatic. Uh, stuff like that. Pressure was also good. Um, I'm trying to think of other good episodes. Oh my, um, oh my goodness, it gave us Graveyard Shift. It gave us Graveyard Shift, alright? And gave us Graveyard Shift. Uh, get, uh, band Geeks. Frankendoodle. It... I'm just... I'm, it just... It... My goodness. It did give us episodes like Sailor Mouth, which... You know, they're fine. Um, Fry Good Games. Yeah. Um, it gave us Squid on Strike, which is also pretty, pretty damn good. Also gave us Christmas Who, which I still watch every Christmas. Just saying. Just saying. Life of Crime was also a really good episode. So yeah, I think season two is better than season one. Just because season season one had the task of giving us the show, giving us the settings, characters, atmosphere, and all that type of stuff. I think season two just ran with it and did a great job. So yeah, moving on to season three. Season, se season three over here. Are you ready, kids? Aye, aye, Captain! Season three. Season 3, I think, was the first season we ever owned, like, the entire season. It wasn't just, like, the DVDs or something like that. So there's a lot of, a lot of nostalgia for Season 3. Let's have a little look-see over here. Okay, so this episode uh, gave us Club Spongebob, which, if I'm remembering correctly, Club Spongebob is the... But which episode Which episode Club Spongebob? Club Spongebob. I thought it had a different name. Is that the right episode? It is that episode! Alright, Club Spongebob is like the best episode that season. It is so good. Um, My Pretty Seahorse was fine. Uh, Just One Bite. That, you know, memes. So many beautiful memes. <laughs> chocolate with nuts. I'm just saying, chocolate with nuts. My text tone on my phone, whenever anyone sends me a text, is the guy yelling, YOU WHAT?! Apart from episodes like Plankton's Army, there aren't a bunch of episodes yelling at me that they're really, really good. Like, of course, season three has great episodes. Like, I'd watch all of them gladly. Um, but here's the, it just kind of, it, it's episodes that don't excite me. I don't think about them. I'm like, what? Plankton's Army? What? That was such a good episode. Like, they're, they're great episodes, but it doesn't have the uh, quality of episodes as season two. Like the amount of quality and amazing episodes that set the stand for the show. And it's not as creative or as inventive as the first season was because the first season gave us the bloody show. But yeah, I'll put it I'll put it C tier. In fact, it might even go B tier behind the first season, if we're being completely honest. But yeah, so that's those are my thoughts. Those are my thoughts. Okay, so now we are on to the movie. The movie. Are you ready, kids? Aye aye, Captain! Right, I'm just gonna say it. I'm just gonna say it. Movie. The first movie. It's damn S tier, alright. There, there is no better animated movie. Like, let me just point out, my friend BJ, he does not like Spongebob. But he was entertained by this movie. I put it on, we were just, I think we finished watching one of the Harry Potters. 
and it was like 11 o'clock or something like that and we're like alright uh, I'm gonna put on the Spongebob <laughs> and he was like no not again and then I put on the movie and he was entertained alright we were all laughing all three of us because there was another person there it was James brother James alright so the movie is fantastic absolutely fantastic it's it has just as many good moments as like all these seasons combined but it's all condensed into the one thing a product it is it is golden spongebob and the animation is so good i think it was it was computer computer done i think i'm not sure at which stage they switched to computer stuff but it was just so good i can't hear you now episode uh season four season four for me Season four was the first was when I was really getting into SpongeBob. Was when I was starting to buy all the seasons, all that type of stuff. I was getting into it. Season four, I think, is really, really good. I think season four is actually like really good. I, I let me let me talk about because I know this is when people start to like get into the the SpongeBob hate train, which I've never understood. I completely disagree with the concept that SpongeBob uh, became garbage after. Steven Hillenberg left. I completely disagree. I think that's unfair and cruel to the team who makes it to claim that. So, season four, Fear of Krabby Patties. That is a really good episode, right? That's a really good episode. She I'm gonna be honest though, Shell of a Man? No, no, no. That was not a good episode. The, the Lost Mattress though, that was a fantastic episode. Like, I would play that over like so many episodes in season three or season one. Like, there's quite a few episodes in season one. Like, I don't need to see Sandy's origin episode. I would rather watch a lot of episodes from season four. Skill Crane? That was fantastic. I loved Skill Crane. Good Neighbors? Oh! <laughs> the Feather Friends. That's such a good one. Uh, Selling Out? Don't remember it all. I don't, I don't know what the episode is. Dunces and Dragons. I think that, I honestly think Dunces and Dragons was, I think it's one of the best, uh, specials. I don't, I don't watch it enough. Just because I always forget about season four. I always just put it on the shelf. And I'm always like, well, there's the original ones, and then there's new SpongeBob. I kind of forget about these ones in the middle. But I also think Dunstan Dragon is fantastic. Patrick Smart Pants, which if I'm remembering correctly, is so good. I, I believe it's the one where Patrick falls off the, the cliff, loses his head, put on a different one, and he's suddenly smart. It's so good, especially the end montage where he's trying to work out what it, like what it means to be a friend type of stuff like that. He's got Squidward hooked up to all these machines. It was so good. And then Krusty Towers. Krusty Towers is the mo like I have the most nostalgia for Bubble Buddy and then Krusty Towers. Krusty Towers I think is a fantastic episode. Um, all the glitters. I remember that one like quite well. Wishing you well. I remember Wigstruck was quite good. I remember watching that a lot. Driven to Tears, uh, Born to be Wild, I love that episode. And they gave us Best Day Ever, which I think is probably the best song in Spongebob history. So I'm honestly, mm, I like I like get some, some uh, angry people from this, but I honestly think season four is better than season three. I'm just saying, there are more episodes in season four that excite me than season three season three has a consistent level of quality like they're all good episodes season four has some bad episodes it definitely has some ones that i don't want to watch but it has some damn good ones as well and for that i'm putting it above all right season five are you ready kids aye aye captain so from here onwards i think a lot of people are not the biggest fan of the show i think this is when a lot of people start to move away from it i think a lot of people just connect the fact that they were getting older and suddenly Spongebob, like, concepts that were so funny to them are no longer funny. For me, that's never, that hasn't happened yet. It's, it's happening a bit now with the later seasons. So, um, season five. I think season five, I think season five is quite good. I think it has some some of the, the worst, some of the best. Uh, so it gave us Friend or Foe, which I think is a really good episode. I think it's it's... It's kind of like the next stage of what the show needed to do. It needed to give us these character backgrounds. It needed to give us this type of information. Kind of grow like the history of these characters a little bit. The original Fry Cook. I thought that was so much fun. I, I really liked just the... Yeah, again, it's, it's taking the world and just building on it and adding more. The, the Krusty Krab. There was an original Fry Cook type of stuff. I'm not even sure if it's considered canon, but it happened. 
Nightlight. Nightlight did what I loved about the first few seasons, is it had this atmosphere to it. And Nightlight captured that perfectly. It captured as well as Rock Bottom and all that type of stuff. Rise and Shine. It, that did something like completely different. It focused on Patrick for the entire episode. None of the other seasons, as far as I can remember, did anything like that. So the idea that these later seasons, especially season five, because there's a lot of hate, I think, for season five, they just completely threw out creativity and just went with what was safe. I disagree. I think it did a great job. But then we, then, then we have episodes like Fungus Among Us, and that, that was not good. That was not good. That was really not good. <laughs> It was not good. But then Spy Buddies. Spy Buddies. That is such a good episode. Come on. It is. Don't argue with me. It is. All right. Good old what's his name? Boat Smarts. Yeah, again, Boat Smarts. This creative idea. Worth the entire video, the entire episode, is like a crash course video thing. It's like the, um, in the first season, the uh, Krusty Krab uh, training video. It's such a good idea. Roller Cowards, another great special. SpongeBob vs. the Krabby Gadget, yet again, a really creative episode idea. Sing a Song of Patrick, best episode this season. It is so good. It was such a good episode. I'm saying that a lot, but the fact is it's true. It's true, damn it. Picture Day, I enjoyed it. Pest of the West, yet again, another really good uh, creative uh, parody and special. I really enjoyed it. And then the two episode, two part special, which this season is kind of known for, which is the whatever happened to SpongeBob SquarePants, which I can't remember too much of, which is never a good sign, but I remember it being pretty good. I remember it being all right. So season five, I think, I think it belongs up here. There's my mouse. There's, there's my mouse. I'm going to put it up here. It's, it's not as good as season four and three. I think it's really good though. I think it, well, it's in C tier. It's in C tier still. So, yeah. All right, moving on. Get a hold of yourself, Eugene. I'm going in. All right, season six. This is when everything, everyone seems to think everything fell apart. This is where Chester's going to start getting some people angry because Chester still thinks this is all pretty damn good. Safety glasses on. All right, house fancy. This is a good episode, apart from that, that one toenail bit. You know how I said in, um, I think it was uh, for the first season, that there are episodes that I didn't want to watch? This, I cannot stand this clip. Like there are some like Watch Mojo top 10 lists where they're talking about SpongeBob and they show this clip, I immediately click out. Any type of list, anything where people talk about this episode, I click out. I cannot stand it. I cannot, oh, oh, no, no. No, but then we have episodes like Gone and Not Normal, which I think are really good. But then we have episodes like The Splinter, which is not good. And Plankton's regular. Here's what I think. I think season six was kind of a low point. It has some great episodes. It has some really good episodes like Toy Store of Doom and Pineapple Fever and Sandcastles in the Sand, which is the best episode this season. But this this season kind of introduced kind of like the, the gross pain stuff into Spongebob, which I did not need. I I, <laughs> I did not need that in, in my life. So I'm going to put this... Mmm. Mmm. That's hard. It, mm, uh. It's not why are you even... A thing level all right it's not but it's f tier all right it, it is f tier i enjoy it and that's that's an unpopular opinion i enjoy it. there's quite bits bits of it but i don't go back to it because of those episodes those five six episodes that are just unpleasant to watch and i just don't want to watch them so is, that's our first f tier beautiful that's that's exactly what i needed all right season seven Safety glasses off, mother f- Eugene. No cheese! <laughs> Alright, so this season, I think, is a good example of a season that does nothing really. Like, it, it is so... It's very baseline, Spongebob. It's very baseline. There's There are very few episodes that I would say are bad. 
but there's only a few I would say that are great. So it's like it's it's you know how season how season three had just this level of quality. Well, this is the level of quality of number seven. It doesn't skew. It doesn't. It doesn't do what season six is, where it has these high, these highs and then boom, and then highs and boom. Um, and it doesn't have season five thing where it's you know, you know type of thing. It it's kind of just plateaued a bit. Um, yeah, like episodes like Growth Spurt. Do we need that? Do we need that? No. Stuck in the Ringer. No. It had episodes like what was it Squidward and Clarinet Land, which are quite. All right, um, Sponge with the Last Stand, which is probably the most forgettable special of the show, but still, it's a special. And yeah. then this season had this kind of like small part of it, which were like all specials, like um, the monster who came to Bikini Bottom, Welcome to the to the Bikini Bottom Triangle stuff, um, the Curse of Hex type of stuff, uh, the Main Drain, all these type of episodes that they really advertised like they were specials, but I believe they were kind of just episodes. Of um, yeah, yeah. Um, then Trench Billies, which is not a good episode. The Great Paddy Caper, that's a good episode. A good episode. It's a good episode. Buried in Time, that was a great episode as well. Hide and then what happens? They had a great montage of SpongeBob searching for Patrick and he was just growing this beard and like, tra- like traveling everywhere. It was so good. Uh, but then, you know, episodes like Big Sister Sam, which were not good. So I'm going to put this season... I think it's I think it's here with with um season six. Cause I think se- season six has higher highs than this season. It has lower lows, but this season just doesn't do anything. It just doesn't do anything. Cause like season five, it it had creative episodes, it had creative ideas, it had, you know, the driving instructing video, all that type of stuff. It did creative stuff. Season six had some like really good episodes and then terrible episodes this it just didn't do anything like there's no particular episodes where i'm like oh damn i really want to watch that episode that's a great episode there ain't nothing there ain't nothing no, geez. <laughs> all right so season eight all right so this gave us some actually pretty good episodes like the drive through the googly artist which was pretty good i actually enjoyed the whole kind of like a vacation uh, like bunch of episodes they did. I know a lot of people don't like those, but I thought they were good because it just broke from the status quo. Did stuff which season seven didn't do, where it kind of did something that was a bit out of the normal SpongeBob range. Other episodes like the Krabby Patty that ate Bikini Bottom, better like specials and bigger episodes than what was done in the previous two seasons. Planet of the Jellyfish, that's a great episode, and it was a parody. Yeah, again, getting back to the parodies. That's what that's what's so good with SpongeBob, the older stuff. A parody of um. Oh, what, what was it called? The old um, horror movie. Horror movie. Horror movie. The body, uh, Invasion of the Body Snatchers. Uh, parody of that. Then also did stuff like Glove World uh, R.I.P. So, yeah, again, finally, unlike in Season 7, where everything's just this status quo, this season, it changed the world of Spongebob. Yes, again, it, it did just replace Glove World with Glove World, like, uh, with Glo- Glove Universe or something like that. It did just replace it. But it it changed the world. It added stuff. It took away stuff. And that's a lot more creative than the past two seasons. Also, the uh, SpongeBob Christmas special here, I think, is not as good as the other Christmas special. But it is quite good. It was a good special. It's a better special than than any of the previous two seasons. Chum Fricassee. That was a great episode. And then Hello Bikini Bottom, I think, gave us the best SpongeBob song ever. So, for that... I'm going to put Spongebob Season 8 D tier. D tier. It's not here. It do- It's not as creative as here, but it's so much better than these two seasons. I'm really scared here, man. You got a name? <laughs> Alright. Season 9. Season 9. Season 9. Season 9. This is when, uh, about halfway through the production of this, I believe, Steven Hillenberg came back to production for that short little uh, amount of time. And that it's a it's a noticeable difference. It's a noticeable difference. If anyone doesn't understand how influential Steven Hillenberg was to this show, just watch the first half of season nine and the second half, and you'll see this massive change in quality. So the first of it gave us episodes like Extreme Sports, standard, boring, standard. Squirrel Record, it's, it's just a throwaway episode. License to Milkshake, that was good. That was a good episode. It does what I want, bloody. Mrs. Puff 
video episodes to do, which is just give SpongeBob the license. Oh, we've had so many years of him failing. It's no longer funny. All right, it's just, oh, give him the bloody license, Mrs. Buff. Oh, little yellow book. That was good. It did kind of just feel like a rehash of an earlier episode. Uh, I think it was the what was it the April Fool's episode, in like season one or two. It just felt like that all over again, just with not as good jokes. Eek and Urchin had actually some really good, like, physical comedy bits. Plankton's pet. I like Spot, alright? I like Spot. The next episode of Plankton, I was like, where the hell is Spot? Come on, guys. We got c continuity here, please. Spot should be with SpongeBob. I mean, with uh, Plankton. He should be a new character who you have faith in, in adding. Alright? I don't want him just to appear for a few episodes, and then you, he's, you know, he's a character for that, and you never see him again. I want him in the rest of them. It's what the, it's what the show kind needs. Uh, don't look now. Fantastic episode. Bit dumb at the end. Uh, seance schmeance. Great episode again. Some great Patrick bits. SpongeBob, you're fired. Eh, yeah, it's all right. I don't know why they made a DVD specifically about that one. <laughs> Kenny the Cat, throwaway episode. Company picnic. All right. It got back to kind of like the old classic SpongeBob feel. More Girl Pearl. It did the creative thing that season five did, which is let's take the focus away from SpongeBob and do something about a different character. Problem is, Pearl is very boring. And I don't care about Pearl. Alright, Patrick's funny. I don't care about Pearl. <laughs> Goodbye, Krabby Patty. Had a great little cameo. I say great, it was alright. Cameo from the Madman guy. Um, this is just a... The, they, they, they build up all these episodes, but the payoff isn't substantial enough to mean anything. And also this episode just felt like a rip-off of the earlier season where Mr. Crab sold the um, Krusty Crab and the guys were making the Krabby Patties out of this like weird gray stuff and then spray painting it. It just, it was almost like a complete repeat of that. But then we had episodes like Bulletin Board that were really, really, really good. So my thoughts on season nine, I'm probably gonna put it, I'm probably gonna put it there. I'm probably gonna put it there. Man, it, mm, mm. Yeah, I'm gonna put, I'll put it there. I'll put it there. I don't think it's as good. Oh, yeah, there. There we go. There we go. There we go. That's more like it, I think. Order up. The movie. The second movie. Second movie. I think the second movie. It has some great bits, but it's also kind of just dumb. And I know when you're talking about Spongebob that, that critique can kind of get thrown out of the way because you're talking about a kid's show and all that type of stuff. But the first movie, it had continuity. It had can. It made... The rules were established. The rules were followed for the most part. Got broken a bit at the end with David Hasselhoff. But it was funny. The co it, was, it was comedic. It was funny. It was smart. It had good ideas. This season... This, it, it, I know they try and make it out as a parody... But it does kind of just feel like jumping on the superhero train. And Burger Beard isn't as funny as Patchy or the, any of that type of stuff. Or, you know, like the, the main villain of the last um, season, which was the... It wasn't the main villain, but the Cyclops. It wasn't as funny as that guy, who didn't even speak. He just made sounds. I'm going to put it there. Like, I'd re-watch it. I'd, re I, I'd watch it. No, I put that. I'd watch it. I I wouldn't be the keenest to watch it. Ah, the sea, so mysterious. Season ten. Season ten and eleven. This is where I might get in a bit of trouble. You know how I said I there are episodes in season six that I can't stand. Because I like the, the physical pain. That type of stuff. Squidward getting his toe hurt. SpongeBob with the splinter. I can't stand it. Season 10 and 11, from what I've watched, I haven't watched the, the seasons in their entirety. I've watched like the vast majority of them though. They, it's taken everything I like about SpongeBob. The, the verbal, the, the comedy in speech, in action, in events, in timing, in editing, all that type of stuff, and just replaced it 
with physical violence because that's funny. Someone getting hit, that's funny. And, and it's always to do with people's eyes, like always stuff getting in people's eyes. And also just like Patrick doing a funny face and his body like changing because like the animation's more expressive and their bodies are more kind of like more fluidy and like squishy and that type of stuff. I don't, I don't like it. I really don't like it. I'm going to put like, mm. All right, season 10. Also uh, quite a short season realistically. Um, Willy Brains. That was a good episode. Focused a lot on the gross humor, but it is a, a good episode. Code Yellow, um, Mimic Madness. Mimic Madness was a pretty good episode. Yeah, again, focusing just on that physical stuff, though. And then, you know, episodes like sports. Again, I just... I don't like it. And I know a lot of people like it. I know a lot of people... people I hear people saying it's like the renaissance of SpongeBob. I'm like... Season 9 and 8 was the renaissance of Spongebob. After the, the the two seasons that were just subpar. They weren't like good and they weren't that bad. So obviously, you know, the show's dead. Um, so yeah, we're having a renaissance, clearly. Um, I just... I don't like it. I have no enthusiasm for it. Like, I've always loved Spongebob and I always want to watch Spongebob. I do not care about season 10 or 11 at all. Why are you even a thing? What? Why are you even a thing? Like season, uh, like season 10 has some good episodes. All right, I'll put it, I'll put it here after these ones. It has some good episodes. Just that I don't care. I don't find it funny when someone gets hit by something. It's not funny to me. It's not entertaining. I'm not like, huh, I love seeing my favorite uh, cartoon characters from my childhood get hurt. Yes, so funny. I love it. I, I hate it. I, it's, it's not good. I don't enjoy it. I don't enjoy it. Um, yeah, I don't enjoy it. So, that is everything. That's from worst to best, in my opinion so far. S tier. Spongebob, the very first movie. Fantastic. Mwah, fan Mwah. I'd watch it any day. Any day. And I'd laugh at it. Like, uh, I, there are no other comedy comedies out there that I can watch over and over and still laugh at. Spongebob, the movie, I've been watching it since I was a child. And I watched it with BJ a few months back. And I, I laughed so much. That doesn't happen with comedies I've seen so many times. It, it is the perfect embodiment of of uh, something for everyone. It's not just a kid's show. It's it's for everyone to enjoy because it's so funny. Season uh, A tier, season two, so many amazing episodes. B tier, the, the, uh, the second season. In fact, I could probably put this one up there. Like, it has some less interesting bits, but it's still really good. I'll, I'll leave it in B tier though for the moment. Um, uh, and C tier, those other seasons. So There's so much to enjoy there. D tier, Really redeemable episodes, great episodes, some bad ones. And then there's the movie, which has funny bits, but does just feel like they're jumping on the hype train for the sake of it. And then, nothing in E tier. Then F tier. Stuff that just didn't do anything that excited me. And then season 11, um, just because I can't, I can't enjoy it. I cannot, I cannot enjoy it. It's, there's, there's nothing funny about it for me. Because like in these, in these ones, in these ones and these ones, the, the, the verbal comedy it's not there, it's not up on this level. It's not, there's nothing that makes me laugh out loud, but it's stuff that makes me smile. It's stuff that makes me happy. It's, it's not here, because all their focus is SpongeBob pulling a funny face, and that's not funny for me. So, yep, those are my thoughts. Wow, that took a very long time. That took me 42 minutes, bloody hell. Alright, thank you so much for watching this uh, ranking video. Uh, let me know uh, what you think, if you agree with me, uh, and what do you think... I'm, I'm, I'm kind of... I originally thought I was going to have some controversial opinions here. I think the most star, uh, stuff people might have a problem with is the last two stuff, because some, for some weird reason, people seem to really like these last two seasons. Um, I don't understand why. I really don't, but... Yeah, let me know what you think in the comments down below and let me know what is your favorite SpongeBob season after the first three. 
Uh, yeah, all right. And remember to also stick around the channel. We'll be uploading soon. It's taking a little while because they're quite long videos to produce. Uh, reviews for each season of SpongeBob. I'm going a bit more into depth with each like episodes I like and why I like them and that type of stuff. So, yep. All right, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you all in the next video. Bye-bye. Mwah!